let's say I think I have Alzheimer. My memory. I go to. I end up going to a neurologist. How do you diagnose it nowadays? Or there, very briefly, how do you die? Is that the CAT scan of the brain? Is it an MRI? No, it's a it's a syndrome. Like so many things in medicine, it's a syndrome. And what I mean by that is, there's no one single thing. So leave me as a metaphor, please. Uh, the metaphor I like to use is apple pie. Now I'll bet if I sent you to the grocery store. And I said, come back with an apple pie. I'll bet you would always get it right. I don't think you're ever going to come out of the store with a, with a can of uh, spray paint right. and say, there I thought go. this was an apple pie. Right. And I'll bet every time you come out with something that you think is an apple pie, I'll bet it's an apple pie. Okay. But I defy you to give me a test that tells me, tells me this is an apple pie. <laughs> when you think about it, apple pies are not all the same. Right. Some are hot and some are cold and some are round and some are square and some okay. have a crust on top and right. some do not. And some are sweet and some are tart. And they all have apples. Uh, uh, That's true. But not all things with apples are apple pie. And somehow we humans are perfectly happy <laughs> with this syndrome concept. It's, it, it's a concept. In cognitive psychology, it's referred to as a construct. It's a concept. We're all perfectly comfortable with living our lives in this way. But somehow we suspend that understanding when it comes to certain things about healthcare and about medical matters and certainly neurology. But so there is no one single test that tells me you have Alzheimer disease. It is a syndrome that has features to it that tend to fall together. So the way in which this gets figured out is, I start by finding out what's the story? What's the story I'm trying to explain? So I need the patient or an informant to tell me, well, when did this start? What Usually was the children. What, what, you know, what, what started this? Okay. You, know, you get what, the history. What, how has it behaved over time? Now, is there a CAT scan in there? Tell me. So I, thought, the, I thought you, get, I thought you, you got in the that. tube. They show your brain is atrophied in this particular way and say, hey, grandma's got Alzheimer's. Well, not entirely, no. So it turns out that uh, the MRI or CT scan of the brain tells you a lot about how the brain structurally looks, but you don't care about that as the patient. You care about whether whatever I see on the MRI, if it explains the story. Okay. So I need still to know what the story is. Remember that the damage that's occurring in these diseases occurs with no symptoms at all for decades. So do you care about having damage that causes no symptoms inside your body? No one tells it. I don't, I don't give a darn. Who cares? It's like the person with prostate cancer. As you know, some right. forms of prostate cancer are incredibly benign things. Yeah. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. You could right? die of something else. That's right. So is it a kind of cancer? Yeah. Is that, is that a happy thing? No. No. But most people do just fine with that, depending on the right. kind of prostate cancer, right? So you're telling me the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease is not necessarily clear-cut or black and white? Correct. Okay. So the, the current standard of care would be you get a history, and that really requires a good amount of back-and-forth discussion and appropriate question asking. You get a brain scan. There are certain changes I would expect on a brain scan. And in most cases, they're there. There's blood tests to check. And most important, there's cognitive testing. Okay. And part of why the cognitive testing, neuropsychology testing, is so important is there are patterns. Alzheimer's disease is an old friend. We know how it behaves. Uh, and the dementia it produces, or the cognitive impairment it produces, partially is distinguishable from dementia and cognitive impairment from other causes. Okay. So that that's gets, why we would do that part of the assessment. And that gets into real expertise and splitting hairs and all that stuff. And that's a little bit beyond uh, um, what I want to talk about today, um, beyond the, the layperson's uh, need to understand. Um, but that's very, very helpful that it's not a black and white diagnosis. You don't just get a blood test and, hey, your sodium is low. That, that, right. that's, that's a black and white test. And what, and what some people... Uh, will will know because they read in the in newspapers and magazines right now is that there are tests, including some blood tests now are being developed, that will, with reasonable reliability, tell you whether your brain is cooking that Alzheimer disease damage. And so some people may have the wrong idea. That's all we need now. 
And what I'm trying to get across is, actually, that's not what you need. You need to know whether it's relevant. Again, I can be cooking that damage with no symptoms at all for many years. What you really want to know is, when you're not doing well in the Jeopardy questions, right. is that because of the Alzheimer problem? Or I didn't so get much you, sleep. Yeah, when you order a test, so I just used this line with the residents and medical students on my, uh, on my inpatient service this week. A test can't tell you that you should have ordered it. <laughs> a test can't tell you if its findings are relevant.